Hey guys. Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? Uh, if you can just leave a note in the chat, whoever is here. Um, we'll probably just wait another five minutes just to let everybody else who wants to join in just join in and then we can kick off the session. Hey Jasmeet, hey Shivam, thanks for joining in today. Cool, sounds good. We'll just give it a few more minutes so that if there are others who are just joining in, we can start once everybody's here hey Vinay. so for the folks who are already here if you guys have any preliminary questions while we wait for a five minutes um, feel free to put them up in chat uh, we can just start a conversation while we wait for others to uh, join the stream hey mad fire on And in case there's any issues with the video or the audio, just let me know in the chat as well. Um, now, during the session, anytime you guys see if something's breaking up or anything, just let me know. Looks like few more people are joining in. Hi Neeraj.
just curious of the people who are already in um, how many are active students right now still in their colleges or pursuing some sort of a degree maybe their third year bachelors fourth year bachelors hi ganesh <laughs> Danish, that's that's great to hear. Hopefully, this is worth uh, the wait. Second year, nice. Uh, anybody else who's already in an engineering college? Okay, Danish is also second year student. That's awesome. It's great you guys are taking interest early on in your career towards a professional degree. Awesome. Ganesh is also in third year. A anybody in here who has more than a few years of game development experience professionally would like it to be as interactive a session as possible so getting a sense of who all are in the audience is important as well um, so when i'm covering something i can talk about things that are specific from your perspective all right cool so we just wait a couple more minutes and then we can kick start this thing That's awesome, Neeraj. Okay, GamerX, uh, you also have a bit of work experience as well. That's great. People who are work experience, they have work experience. Do you guys already have sort of a online presence in terms of a portfolio or something uh, to showcase to potential um, recruiters slash companies that might be looking to hire? Awesome. Mm, 
just meet you have a lot of experience as well nice cool all right just give me one second let me switch to the presentation as well and then we can, we can kick start this chat as well one second All right, um, cool. Let's kick this off. Uh, hey, so let me know if you can see the presentation now. I think there is a little bit of a delay here. Hopefully, it's not that bad. Cool. Um, so today what we mainly wanted to talk about was um, how to get a job as a game developer. Um, now the topic is sort of very generic and broad and that it has been intentionally left that way so we can um, open this as a platform to a lot of broad audience, um, not necessarily specific to just uh, people who are just uh, you know finishing their colleges not specific to just people who already have work experience, but can cater to uh, both Because you might already have a job, but you might be on the lookout for another one and how you can go about Setting yourself up right so that you can you know uh, attract potentially uh, good companies um, you can apply to high-profile companies um, that have a high quality selection bar um, and whatnot. A uh, little bit background about me. Um, so I've been in the gaming industry since 2012. I started my tech career back in 2009. Uh, graduated from Delhi College of Engineering. Um, then some of you are like you mentioned you guys are already in college and are already started working on your projects in you know making free in your free time making games and whatnot. I wasn't lucky enough to get exposed to this domain early on. I wish I was, uh, uh, but once I started working in the IT sector, I realized I wanted to do something more creative and that's where I got the inspiration of trying out game development. Um, I wasn't a very avid gamer as such. I used to play a few games, but never really as such a, a avid personality in terms of trying out every game that there is on the market. So um, since then, I switched to gaming. I uh, did my master's from Carnegie Mellon uh, University uh, in US, and uh, that was predominantly focused around entertainment technology, uh, which involved a lot of gaming projects, interactive projects, uh, making VR applications, uh, head-mounted displays, even before Oculus existed. Uh, this was back in 2012. Um, and then I moved to San Francisco, uh, worked there with a lot of high profile companies uh, such as Kixai, uh, DNA, uh, uh, even at EA, uh, Electronic Arts. Um, so after that I moved back to India and have been working with a lot of Indian based companies as well, working remotely with a lot of different companies. So in a nutshell I have a lot of experience working with a lot of different uh, companies over the years uh, worked on a lot of different projects from single player projects to massive multiplayer games, real time mobile applications, console games, as well as uh, even did a bit of solo indie development as well last few years. Um, so that's a bit about me uh, and just to fill you in um, on what my backstory has been. So today we're going to cover these few things. Um, we're going to mainly talk about 
what are the things that you can do in order to prepare yourself for any sort of a company in general prepare yourself uh, for this industry i would say not just any company um every time i talk to uh, uh, junior engineers or or people that i've been mentoring there are always a set of common questions that come up so instead of directly doing q and a i listed some of these questions down so uh, i'll address this you might already have these some in your mind um, some might be new to you but i thought this might be a good way to just address the most common questions that i usually get asked over and over again uh, we'll look at some of the code we won't be uh, digging too deep into it as such but it will be more of a teaser uh, we can try and see the interest in uh, what you guys feel might be best and maybe schedule follow up you know uh, such sessions where we can be more hands on on just purely code topics based on what's the feedback you guys give today uh, and in the end we'll keep try and keep 10 to 15 minutes open for general sort of uh, questions as well cool so let's jump in so what do i mean by general preparation first of all um, so what mainly i'm referring to is there are a common set of things that you can do irrespective of which company you are applying to or what you are doing as long as you know you are in this industry the, this pretty much applies to everybody and to a certain extent a lot of these also apply to uh, not just engineers but if you want to become a game designer if you want to become a 3d artist uh, the code specific pieces might not apply to you then but uh, rest of the pieces would still apply and of course you can swap out the codes relevant ones to other things that you can showcase in this domain right so so if as an engineer you want to showcase code snippets uh, to the potential uh, engineering manager who's going to be hiring you if instead you want to be a 3d modeler you'll replace that with 3d models that you have uh, you can showcase to them even before you have a first conversation so so hopefully that gets the idea across of what this is and and on a broader context this is actually very uh, uh, not just specific even to gaming industry to be honest uh, these are very much generic if tomorrow you want to switch into more of web development or android development ios development a lot of these sort of practices and suggestions would help you along the way doing those things as well um, getting you prepared getting your online presence prepared uh, for you know showcasing the right things to uh, the right companies when you apply for any particular job so first thing first i think a lot of there's a lot of online learning material available um, so especially for people who are in college and even for people who have you know good five to six years experience and above um, there is a lot to learn even today only a morning i was watching some uh, unity session on you know lightweight render pipeline which is the new thing that's in beta right now right so even with people with a lot of uh, industry experience still need to learn so there's a lot of online resources that you can tap into and especially if you're just starting your career uh, these can be really helpful because a they're free uh, they don't cost anything uh, you can tap into them anytime and you know uh, these are just very helpful in terms of building your skill set up and learning new things as you go so some of these are you know uh, there are ample youtube channels out there um, which are specifically centered around game development as well um, so specifically you know if you look at a lot of these um, uh, tutorialish type channels where you see you know multi-part series but there are other youtubers out there who are making a lot of great content um, brackies is one of them um, unity 3d dot college if you check that out that's another a very popular channel as well uh, very focused towards programming within game development and i think he has out there in my opinion that's one of the best channels that you can find for very uh, good programming specific advice um, when it comes to how to get a sense of how games are made in the industry so so you know following these tutorials is great but they never give you a sense of 
how games are made and coded when you're working with 25 other programmers in the industry on a project that goes on for two years, right? Uh, sure, it's great to do a quick RPG, sort of a tutorial uh, following, you know, a six part video series, but that's the moment you try and build it into a full fledged RPG, you'll run into a lot of issues. So tutorials only get you so far. Uh, and this is where I feel like the short videos format that Unity 3D College has uh, work great because they pick up one particular topic, especially around design patterns, let's say, uh, or specific coding architecture and let you sort of from the ground up build an understanding of how that thing helps you and how that can be actually implemented. So you don't get too overwhelmed with a lot of big things in the projects, but you can actually focus on improving quality at a module level and then try and put you know 10 different modules that you might have learned together into one particular project that you might be working on uh, let me quickly look at the chat if there's anything in there uh, so danish asked does online learning certificates matter uh, so that's a very good question danish um, and again it's more of a personal preference and I think this is one of those questions that I will cover as well. So just hold that thought there. I'll come back to it uh, as well, uh, which is on the very similar lines as, you know, uh, do I need a specific gaming degree or is a general bachelor's degree enough when I'm graduating? So, so sort of on similar lines, um, but we'll just come back to it once. Yeah, we already have that addressed in one of the slides. So hold that thought. Cool. Um, this is another one. Uh, Discord is getting a lot popular nowadays. Um, and the whole idea is that it is free, open. Um, anybody can join. A lot of these YouTube channels and YouTube uh, YouTubers have these Discord communities where a lot of game developers come together and, you know, uh, this can be a very good source for pretty much anybody actually. Uh, if Even if you're working as a senior, senior engineer on any of the projects in your current company, right? Um, you might be running into a weird issue uh, with say, you know, the new input system. So, you know, if you're running into something and you're not able to find online, it's always good to just, you know, look up these game uh, Discord communities and just drop in a note about the problem you're running into. Most likely somebody else actively working somewhere in the other part of the world is also facing the same issue. So, so these kind of things also help a lot. This is another, Discord is another one that gets uh, overlooked uh, in the Indian gaming community a lot. Um, developers don't really participate much in Discord communities, but I'd highly encourage you to go and uh, Google for some top game, game uh, you know, uh, game development communities and there are some very good um, uh, Discord channels out there. Uh, Brackies again has, uh, has a big following so uh, their channel is very live as well. Um, and there's another game development Discord uh, channel as well. Mm -hmm. It's just called G I think GDC or something. So, so that's also a, a very uh, live and vibrant community where you can even find, you know, not just Unity but um, your other Unreal game developers and other sort of game developers as well. So it's a very live community where you can tap into these people for help uh, whenever you're running into any issues. Um, or you just need other people to work on, uh, you know, find other people to form team with, with right? Um, to work on any side project that you might be exploring into and you need somebody uh, to partner up with. So generally for those also, it's very helpful. Same thing as game jams, hackathons. Hackathons usually mainly for software, game jams more gaming specific. So a lot of these Discord communities, again, host specific game jams. And then there is the global game jam that happens in January, sort of end of January every year uh, around the world, which has an online version as well. I would highly encourage you uh, to take part. Um, if you're working in a current organization, uh, that's gaming specific encourage your company to you know uh, give your team whoever wants to take part in it a day or two off to actually take part in a game jam because these kind of things um, let you creatively develop you know a broader sense because you know if you're working in a company in India you might be focused probably on some racing games some hyper casual game 
or even maybe you know some casino based game because those are sort of the genres that are popular but in order to keep your creative sort of you know uh, juices flowing it's always good to just focus 48 uh, sort of hours on you know just building something random around a theme that lets you you know almost go crazy with it uh, without any you know uh, without worrying about too much about the outcomes it's always a good outlet then there are a lot of these online uh, learning courses uh, Coursera, uh, Udemy, Udacity um, are some of the popular ones uh, Prural site which I haven't listed here uh, is another one that's getting popular now so a lot of them have these sort of uh, gaming specific courses around there it's usually only good if you're just starting up so if you are already familiar with a little bit of game development and have already um, maybe made a small project or a couple of projects then usually these won't help you that much unless you're picking up some advanced level course and most of the time the only drawback that I see with these courses is that a lot of them get outdated very fast so so you might be working on you know 2017 version of unity on Coursera's most popular game development course but you know now industry is using 2019 and a lot of those latest things aren't even there so so it's good when you're just starting off so use it as sort of a launch platform uh, when you're if you're just starting your career now uh, to get a overall sense of how to go about just the process of game development but don't give them too much importance in terms of uh, how you know uh, based, whether you can actually finish it or not that that's you know doesn't really hold that much important as long as you're focusing the things that you learned um, to be you know uh, to other projects if you can apply those that's actually a much bigger um, much bigger uh, thing that you can take to your uh, online portfolio projects are always more valuable than sort of uh, any certification that you can show because projects tell me that hey you've done something right uh, certificate just tells me hey you have a degree which might as well be just another bachelor's degree uh, which uh, to most don't really hold much value uh, let me just take a look at the chat. Let's create duty battle over gameplay. Okay, so game jammer, you asked like does creativity matter over gameplay? Um, so it totally kind of comes down to what exactly your goal is or your organization's goal is in order to um, for making games so there are ample clones for pretty much anything that gets even remotest bit popular so it's hard to justify that you know those people are wrong who are just making clones um, they're also trying to make you know some money uh, living making games so it's it's ultimately comes down to what your core sort of uh, what your core sort of motivation is behind being a game developer. So one of the engineers in our company right now, um, he is, he was an indie developer for, for a while, for a few years and was trying to make uh, relatively different concepts, uh, new games, explore new ideas again in the hyper casual space, but there's so much competition and of clone of games that are popular because they know when people are searching for these popular games if theirs is just below them and you know um, they'll they'll naturally get downloads and that will give them revenue so so it's hard to justify one way or the other um, but it purely depends on what your motivation is what your company's motivation is uh, cool So the last thing I wanted to add in there was uh, uh, our company Outscale, what I started last year. So this is a very sort of a radical concept of what we are trying to do in the education industry. Um, as you know, there aren't any 
popular game development schools out there um, so you know if you have to learn how to go about building large scale games once you have that basic understanding of what game development is what how do you go about building small games right games that can be done by one or two programmers over the course of say a month right those are relatively small games um, but when we are talking about games that take years to build they take at least six months to build uh, have a lot of depth uh, you know games like clash royale games like hearthstone a lot of these uh, games that span years um, if not more so so how do you even go about understanding that nomenclature so so last year when i started outscale uh, with my co-founder rishita what we set out to do was uh, inculcate this training where where we're taking sort of people who are um, familiar with game development they already have a decent bit of understanding of what games are how they are made etc and taking them to the next level in terms of how to go about building these uh, you know uh, bigger games um, and so what we do basically is hire developers uh, in a in a group uh, in a cohort we train them intensely during a three month period and a lot of the topics that are basically covered are the things that nobody ever touches on um, these are things like uh, how to use design patterns effectively um, these are things about how to go about you know using algorithms effectively in order to come up with some sorting logic say um, you know how about communicating or working on a bigger project when you have two people working on the same feature you how do you use different github branches in order to communicate and in order to work effectively so that neither of you get blocked while working on these projects right so so a lot of those sort of things that take you to a uh, intermediate engineer and not just a beginner basically so so that was the goal um, and uh, realizing that there aren't any good sort of uh, uh, career options when it comes to uh, you know focusing on game development itself that is what we basically try to do so if this is something you'd like to explore just uh, feel free to reach out directly to us um, on hello at the rate outscale.com and you know we'll be happy to uh, put you into the interview process for our next cohort as well uh, once that kicks off um, cool mm -hmm. okay so next wanted to briefly cover was how to go about building an online portfolio so now you've gone through all these online resources started learning actively about game development not just from you know a basic understanding of what game development is but even you know how uh, bigger games are built right and how how you know games like assassin's creed possibly could be built uh, so nobody expects you to really build an assassin's creed by yourself uh, when you're in college but uh, let's say if you're you know uh, you're interviewing at let's say ubisoft right and you have a small demo project that showcases the climbing mechanic that is popular in Assassin's Creed, right? So if you can show me a 30 second video and I'm your interviewer at Ubisoft, then, you know, um, that just makes a connection, right? That sets you apart from the rest of them, um, makes a big difference when it comes to game development specifically, uh, because gaming is a very sort of a creative industry it's not really uh, like regular you know um, IT um, even though that is slightly the trend is changing so having an online portfolio even there helps now a lot especially if you want to work with cutting-edge technologies and if you want to work with startups so that helps a lot um, so having an online portfolio just immensely helps so so what I'll briefly cover now is uh, what are the pieces of an online portfolio? An online portfolio just doesn't mean a bunch of YouTube videos. Uh, there's a lot more pieces to it um, and we'll just go over them one by one. The first one and surprisingly, not surprisingly, uh, is GitHub. Um, so if you're an engineer, 
irrespective of gaming, non-gaming, uh, it's very important to have a GitHub profile. Uh, I don't think I can stress enough um, that having a GitHub profile can literally boost your chances of uh, getting an interview versus not getting an interview based on your application. And I don't mean just have an empty GitHub profile, so just go and create one and, and just submit that as an empty profile, but actually have projects up there. Now, people usually, especially in college and early on in their career, get scared in terms of, um, you know, uh, hey, this is a pretty small thing. Here, I just have a character jumping around. I don't have much. Um, so I don't think this is worthy of putting up on GitHub. But actually, that's not the case. Uh, irrespective of what the project is, irrespective of how big or small it is, even if you're just using it as a learning thing, right? You should have a project for it set up already on GitHub, and you'll be you should be backing it up for two primary reasons. Say you're you know doing a tutorial uh, or an online class through let's say Coursera, okay, and there you have a project. Um, a typical you know uh, online course that you might be following might take you another three to four months to finish um, and while in the middle of it what happens if your laptop crashes and burns right like hard disk crash uh, laptops crash you've lost all your progress for that particular time so a just to you know safeguard yourself against that github is super important b you know you can tell me verbally that hey you did a course on Coursera and it had blah 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 it had this and that but you know uh, I go and look up your github profile anyways if I'm an engineering manager or an engineering hiring manager um, I will look at your github profile no matter what the case may be or at least engineering managers in good companies definitely uh, look up github profiles and ask for it so typically having your projects up on github even if they are coursera's tutorial exercises showcases to me that you know working with github you understand the basic workflows you know how to back up your uh, code you know uh, you know the the standard practices and i'm not ha i'm i won't have to teach you everything from scratch um, and also the added advantage is then i can actually directly go into your code without having to ask you uh, anything specific so um, I can start looking at you know some of your code pieces and trust me you want your engineering managers to review your code pieces rather than review your resumes engineers are generally bad at uh, making resumes um, so it's always in your advantage that you know um, you give the company and your hiring managers the opportunity to pro, you know review your code on which they'll hire you or in which they'll make a decision to call you in for an interview versus you know just on a sheet of paper where you might have bragged about three different internships that you might have done and i would have no idea what exactly you were working on during your internships so have your github profile put up all possible things that you can put up as your uh, public repositories so that anybody can access them since you're anyways learning you're not really uh, or you're either a you're learning if you're already in the industry you might be experimenting with some side project um, none of these are really uh, projects which you want to make private uh, unless you are working on some propriety game idea or you know something that's that you want to sell or things like that Sure, maybe then you can make them as a private repository, but focus on doing uh, as much as public repositories because the moment I'm reviewing, uh, you know, uh, anything uh, on GitHub, I open somebody's profile and I look at 20 repositories that they have, right? That, that alone uh, sets the bar high for this particular candidate in my mind, right? Versus I open uh, GitHub and there's nothing there, just an empty page, right? Or worse there is no github um, that makes me doubt does this candidate even know and would i have to go in and teach these things uh, to this person so 
so that makes me sort of wary whenever you know I'm, I'm trying to look at people who can who I can hire as well um, plus another thing you know, usually when you start your interviews uh, if you have a github profile then you know uh, most likely your managers your hiring managers would jump into a project that you would have worked on and ask you questions about that right so now the advantage is in your favor why because you already worked on these projects you yourself worked on them so you know them inside and out right so if they're talking about some random thing you might have a trouble answering it on the spot versus a project that you might have spent a month working on right if i ask you questions about that you will be very confident and in a better position to answer those questions so uh, in general there is never a use case where having a github profile is actually gonna uh, diminish your chances of converting a potential application into a job interview or to converting a potential job interview into a full-time offer. Uh, so always, always, always have a GitHub profile and put all the things that are uh, non-proprietary that might not belong to a company that you might have interned with. Uh, those things, you can always put them up as public profiles. Uh, let me quickly take a look at the chat on what's happening. Okay, so GamerX is asking, is it good to try and make own game company or try to get any gaming industry for five day job? Um, so what I recommend is it depends on what career phase you're in and what you're aiming to achieve out of it. Uh, making your own games is great but it's a lot of work and especially if you're working alone it can become very stressful um, so it totally depends on your background your motivation your uh, you know financial position whether you can sustain yourself uh, without having any income for say a six months maybe a year uh, till you can launch a game so it purely depends but um, on the other side trying to get a job usually never really hurts as long as you know that the company that you're working with and the team that you're going to be working with is good and you'll get a chance to learn and grow uh, that every time you sort of uh, are looking to uh, you know uh, you're looking to basically apply for any company always be mindful in terms of uh, you know it's a two-way interaction the company will get some benefit out of you being there you should also get some benefit out of uh, being there right so so if you are a junior engineer you should look at can can I become an intermediate engineer um, two years working at this company are there seniors who can mentor me in the right way um, are there other people who I can learn from, um, be it not just senior engineers, but even like senior game developers or senior artists who might have more experience in the industry, right? Um, so, so try and evaluate it from that perspective, keeping the financial angle aside, you know, uh, that purely most of the time determines a lot of our choices, whether we can make our own games or whether we want to look for a job or not. Um, keeping that aside, uh, uh, this should be sort of your driving factor especially when you're early in your career when you're this not this will also help you sort of learn the best practices on how to build your own games i think the issue is that if you're still in college or rather if you know uh, somebody who's in college right now in in the chat room right if i ask you to make uh, the next world of warcraft right or try and go about building a, a simpler version of league of legends right can you do it right you might think yes you can but when you start running into issues uh, you know uh, you won't have that uh, experience to understand you know how to go about architecting these big games um, gameplay is great but you know uh, architecting a lot of these big games is another skill that you only learn through experience and practice so so whenever you're looking at it from a job perspective look from that angle as well uh, can you review our github profiles too and just let us know how it is and what you need to improve 
just a small review uh, Danish um, what I can recommend is that uh, it's hard to review everybody's profile as such um, but basically just send out a quick email to hello at the rate outscale.com uh, with your relevant information and I'll see if I can get some time then uh, I'll take a quick look as well um, and happy to always provide any help um, cool I think we are definitely running much behind on time so let me just run through this as well um, so for building your online portfolio now we just talked about github so far you know uh, which is good for demoing your code bases right your demo projects but if you've already built some projects then uh, definitely have them as a playable demo as well whether you're putting up apk google drive apk links for android if you're making something mobile if you're making something as a, uh, uh, you know a windows playable or a, uh, WebGL playable things like that you can always create a free account on itch.io which is a great site for you know in general uh, sending this information uh, so you know try and sort of build an online portfolio there as well and this is purely for the games that you might have in a playable state so so you can always even do you know your github profile any project you can have a readme that actually directly links to a itch.io page um, uh, where your actual playable is so people can not only just check your uh, you check your actual game uh, code but also get a sense of how it plays because that is also very important in this industry and that's where predominantly uh, gaming and um, a regular IT job would differ um, YouTube videos again you know if you have already a finished project some people you know if you have 20 different demos available then you know if I'm evaluating your profile for a job opportunity I might not have time to play 20 demos so it's always good to make short 30 second to one minute videos of all the different projects and embed those links in your github projects itself in the top readme file that way you know I can quickly check out how much effort do you put in terms of you know the output quality as, as well yeah, you know and and a lot of these online portfolio things apply equally when you're starting your career and even after when you're five years into your job right so if I have to apply let's say for a engineering manager at some other company you know I would still like all these things would still be relevant to me because even as a manager a lot of the companies expect you to be hands-on to actually code uh, you might not be coding all the time but maybe half of your time you might be coding as well so so a lot of these sort of general you know structure follows pretty much for everybody um, LinkedIn which is obviously the most obvious one everybody has um, or everybody should have at least a, a presence up on LinkedIn um, the only thing that I'll mention is try and add as much information for all the projects that you might be working on uh, as well there uh, this is one thing that usually uh, gets overlooked along with uh, when you're working with somebody whether it's an internship try and list down what your responsibilities were at that particular thing a game programming intern at XYZ company uh, or a game developer at ABC company uh, without any detailed information doesn't really help me get a sense of what exactly you were doing a lot of people end up writing this information in part of your resume um, but LinkedIn is a much better view working on a VR based application but some small part of it right so uh, a lot of you know uh, those details can definitely be added in here cool so so there are some of these common questions that I briefly mentioned uh, and this is going back to the first one being do I really need a gaming specific college degree um, and this is a very common one and it's very similar to uh, the gaming certification um, that someone had asked in the chat before as well um, so personally everybody has a different perspective on it but in general from what I've observed in the industry uh, is usually uh, 
it's always if you follow the steps that I mentioned before, right? If you have an online portfolio, you probably don't need any specific degree um, or any gaming specific certification, especially even Unity's. Unity certification aren't great, um, personally in my opinion, and that's why even the developers that uh, game developers that we have as part of the company, we aren't really pursuing uh, Unity specific uh, Unity's uh, uh, certification. Um, because they give you a decent sense of the tools that Unity has to offer, but they don't necessarily make you better game developers. And what I mean is that if you take that certification and now you want to try and make, let's say, HTML5 games, um, a lot of the standard practices that we cover at Outscale during our training process um, you know, can still be applied whenever you're making you know, a, a HTML5 JavaScript game. But Unity certification doesn't do you any good there. <coughs> Sorry. So that's why I hold these certifications very low in terms of benchmark. And I don't give them a lot of importance. And that's usually the trend in the industry at large as well. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, if there is some, having it doesn't hurt, but I would say if you had to choose one, whether to prepare, spend one or two months preparing for a certification or spend the same time actually building like a two month big project, I would obviously suggest you to go and make a project, put it up on GitHub, put up a playable version on Edge, put up a YouTube video on your GitHub profile, add that project to your LinkedIn, do those things for free while you learn something new as well, um, you know, uh, working on a game project versus trying to get a certification which just adds one line in your LinkedIn resume. So uh, between the two, always go for more practical project stuff. Otherwise, uh, you know, if you can, then try and, you know, uh, go for a, some certification as well. Another one that's very common is, um, do I need to, uh, you know, focus on Unity and uh, alone or should I focus on Unreal or should I learn something else or should I try to learn all of them? Um, my general advice is focus on one um, and develop a better sense of how games are built. Um, and what I mean is basically don't just focus on um, the things that Unity provide and then try and hop over in six months to learn what Unreal has. Uh, instead, just try and build increasingly complex projects in you know just one, let's say Unreal. Uh, so build a simple demo in Unreal to understand what it is. Then build a slightly more complex project uh, that you know maybe is for a two week project goes beyond what the tutorials that you followed before covers then build a month long project with potentially a, a team member um, and you know add more depth to it add more mechanic to it add a lot more levels to it right so so go deep rather than go broad um, and uh, that way if you tomorrow uh, if you are experienced in Unreal let's say right and tomorrow somebody is looking for um, you know, a lot of specific, unity specific jobs, as long as you're a good game developer, uh, it doesn't matter whether you're working on Unity and uh, or Unreal. Of course, you might have a little bit of learning curve between C++ versus C Sharp, but, you know, overall, a lot of the same concepts still apply. Um, then another common one is, should I, you know, early on in my career be focusing on startups versus bigger companies? Uh, this is a very common one as well. Uh, again, the motivation is sort of similar in terms of, you know, whether you want to learn a lot of things in a fast paced environment versus, uh, you know, you need more structure and you just want to focus on one thing. So, uh, and it purely depends on personal preference, how you feel you understand best. Um, my recommendation would be early on in your career go towards startups because startups require you to be more generalists so you should have a good understanding of a lot of different things um, things keep changing as well so so you get to try out early in your career a lot of different uh, aspects and you know uh, that just lets you get a broader perspective in terms of 
uh, what you might be potentially interested in uh, going forward as well. But at a bigger company, you might be just focusing on one small aspect, right? So if uh, if a bigger company is w working on a big multi-year project, you might be just focus focusing on like, you know, building the player profile um, for literally a month. So, so it doesn't let you the opportunity to explore much. But if you feel like you you need more structure, you need more, uh, you know, organization in terms to in order to learn and grow, then probably one of the mid size to a bigger company uh, would be a better choice in order to kickstart your career. Uh, but of course, you know, trying to get into one of those, uh, especially in India, there are only few and it's definitely much harder. So, so if you're not getting that opportunity to go towards a bigger company, start working in startups, start working, building up your online portfolio uh, in your free time as well. And, you know, try and uh, build up an online presence uh, as well. That will help you, uh, you know, in a years to come, apply for those bigger uh, dream companies that you might want to work with. Um, and I think at the end of the day, the most common one comes down to be uh, is why do you want to be a game developer? And I think this is probably the most common interview question as well. doesn't matter if it's a HR interview or if it's a technical interview. That's probably the first one. Uh, why do you want to be a game developer? What makes you think you can you would be a good game developer as well? Things like that, right? Um, uh, just, you know, uh, type yes in the chat. If the answer to that question is that I'm a passionate uh, gamer, I've been playing games since I was five years old. Uh, you know, if that is your first sort of a response, just you know, uh, just type yes in the chat. I just wanted to see if that's that's usually because that's the most common one that I feel people respond to. Um, does the audience here also have a similar sense in terms of yes? You know, I've been playing games for such a long time. Um, so me, seems natural that I'm going to go make games as well. Yeah, because the whole thing is like, you know, uh, you have a lot of, uh, pro gamers as well. Uh, you know, professional esports players and whatnot um so you know it seems sort of arbitrary to say that hey i've been playing games for so long yeah might as well just make some right um seems arbitrary so uh that's why usually you know it's not a best answer in general for that question um because you never see these sort of game developer this you know ga gamers who are professional uh, pro level players they're pretty passionate about gaming as well they're pretty uh, active game players and they play a lot uh, probably more than you and I uh, you know uh, so usually you know uh, you don't see them sort of turn into uh, game developers as well because you know making games is is fun uh, but it's also very stressful it's also very uh, hectic uh, as well um, so so try and think of something different there if that was your response if not then great if that was then you know uh, try and try and sort of google and come up with a better response over to a small code demo and then we'll do some general questions uh, we are just running out of time but what i wanted to mainly show was so if you uh if you go to this URL, github.com slash outscale, um, so I've just put that in the chat as well. Um, you'll, so this is where we put up all our open source projects as well. Uh, so all the projects that our internal game developers are working on, are building, um, you know, their code bases you can pretty much find here. So these are all the training projects. If you look at the members there, um, you can go to their profile as well. Some of the individual solo projects that they started off working during their training early on um, are on their respective GitHub profiles as well. Um, so this, these are more of team projects. So, 
So for instance, uh, this Hitman project um, was again a two-week project, three developers uh, working together um, on a particular, um, if you guys are aware of, there's a very popular Hitman Go game, which is a puzzle game. And so the whole idea was that the target was set that we're going to make as much of the game as possible um, within just two weeks. Uh, two weeks was a hard deadline and here you see a sample project, the, the Unity project for this. And it's all available uh, as a public repository so you can uh, check it out as much as you feel. Um, you can dig into it, open it up in Unity, play the game um, as well. So uh, what you can do is, I would recommend is actually if you're interested, go fork this project from the top right. So it will fork it into your uh, own GitHub account and then check it out and start playing around with it, experimenting with understanding the code base. Um, so it's not a very complex project, uh, but if you're new to big game, dev big game projects, then this might be slightly more complex. So this is just to sort of give you a teaser of how games are sort of built at, you know, uh, at uh, industry level. So, so if I just want to show you a little bit sneak peek about it. So here's the entire project structure that you typically see inside Unity. Um, here's the scripts folder and, you know, you see a lot of these different folders for organizing your different scripts. These are player specific scripts enemy so let me just dig into enemy so there are 10 different enemies in the game and all behave differently all have their custom logic etc etc so how do you make something that's uh, flexible in the sense that tomorrow if i want to add 10 more enemies i literally do not have to change anything in my existing codes um, those kind of challenges usually you know if you're following tutorials online uh, going through Coursera, those kind of things never get touched upon um, as part of these uh, online curriculums as well. So this is what we are basically, uh, you know, recommending a lot as well. Uh, so, you know, if you have 10, you know, there are 10 different, uh, here you can see all the different types of enemies that we have. Uh, these are all the controllers, which means, you know, if you're familiar with model view controller as a design pattern, then, you know, that's something that uh, uh, we follow a lot heavily as well. Um, so there are different controllers each for each specific, you know, uh, um, enemy type. And then there are different types of enemies uh, view, which are basically mono behaviors. Other scripts that are not views are not going to be mono behaviors. So, so these are, this is just to give you a slight peek into uh, how we build larger projects and, and what it takes to actually go about building a big project uh, just to give you a sneak peek of what you know uh, this project looked like at the end of two weeks uh, this is a quick sort of a, a, a short video um, let's see if this plays um, okay uh, think there's some nah, okay seems like it's not playing i'll just share the link in the chat for the for the video as well for the project um, and yeah it's, you know the the main uh, project gives you a quick summary of what this project was what was the purpose of it um the different design patterns that were used um different techniques and plugins that were used etc etc so it gives you a high level summary of what this project was about uh, it clearly highlights that this wasn't something that was developed for production it was mainly for learning purposes and how much we can achieve as a team within a short time span so um, so it's not that we are making a hitman go clone and trying to you know launch it on the market but mainly can we take that design and not focus on the design but actually focus on the implementation right um, so so that was the whole goal of this particular project um so yeah uh, this is just sort of a quick um ah sorry i think looks like permission is the issue um uh, let me give me one second let me fix that uh,
okay i think try this link you guys should be able to try it out Uh, cool. Uh, so yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, so let me just quickly look at some of the questions. Um, all right. Cool. So the whole idea was not to today deep, you know, dig deep into. Um, too much about coding side of things because these are fairly complex projects even you know um, this was a month and a half into uh, the training cycle um, for for the developers in-house uh, so if you're very new to game development don't worry if you don't understand a lot of these things these things are fairly complex but this gives you an idea that you know uh, ideally you should be aiming towards having this sort of an open profile up so anybody can go and check it out and you know um, get a sense of who you are as a developer and you know how, what type of code you write what kind of projects you might be interested in etc etc and gives them a good sort of opportunity to get to you know you before they even jump on a call um, or decide to interview you so so that's the the key idea here uh, cool so I think overall that's um, from a high level that's all the things that i wanted to cover today and we are definitely overshooting on a time today as well so um feel free to put up any questions in the chat uh, we'll just hang around for another five to ten minutes depending on um, what questions people have and i'll just quickly check what the chat as well and see um if there are any questions that i might have missed uh, Yeah, Gujar777 mentioned that GitHub profile and resumes. Yeah, I think this is one thing that I didn't explicitly mention, but at the top of your resume that you're submitting to companies, always make sure to have a LinkedIn profile link and a GitHub profile link. Um, whenever I get a resume and I have those two, I usually don't even look at the resume. I only look at those two things and make my decision pretty fast on uh, whether I want to spend 30 minutes talking to this person uh, or not so you know uh, rather than trying to make sense of random gibberish um, that anybody can write that hey I did an internship at blah 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 company I don't know really what you did but if you can show me uh, you know uh, that adds a lot more bonus points for you gamejolt.com so Neeraj mentioned that's another platform to showcase games thanks for sharing that Neeraj um, the following link to her, learn how to use github yeah so if you are new to github and want to learn uh, just go to github.com uh, there's ample free resources available there uh, on how to use github standard practices um, you can use a lot of those things uh, there, there are ample tutorials out there as well so don't get too complex deep into it just that uh, um, we'll be circulating a feedback form uh, as well in the chat so so people who have just stuck around till the end uh, really appreciate you guys taking the time out today um, for this conversation would appreciate if you can you know spend five minutes to uh, you know just fill the feedback form um, they're trying to see if you know there there is interest in the audience in order to have this on uh, you know uh, maybe on a two week frequency or a three week frequency so so there's questions in there where you can mention uh, what uh, uh, specifically uh, you would like to you know cover as part of the next uh, webinars as well uh, we can do something more specific to interview specific preparation um, we can do something more specific to coding specific as well so so once you fill out that feedback form please do leave a comment in there as well uh, about uh, what you would like to see as you know following topics as well uh, that would be really helpful uh, to get a sense of what you guys are interested in and then we can you know uh, formulate a session around that as well uh, cool um, just going through the chat um, what are some of the best design patterns you would recommend for the games like PUBG to be developed in Unity? 
good question, Neeraj. Uh, like Bhavyam briefly mentioned, uh, it's never just one pattern. For games that complex and that big, even this small two-week project uses five, six different design patterns. And that has nothing. If you uh, check out, you know, say, uh, uh, any of the contributors on that same project, if you check out their uh, uh, GitHub profile, you'll see uh, a tank project as well, um, which is a very sort of a basic project and that uses potentially like I think eight or nine different design patterns in just one project. So, so there's never really one design pattern, but uh, it's always a mixture of a lot of them. Um, there is a very good site uh, on game design patterns. It's an actual book. Uh, if you want, you can buy it from Amazon, but there is a web version available for free and it's almost considered as the holy grail of uh, design patterns. So if you already are familiar with a lot of you know game development best practices and how to make simple games in Unity and you want to take your understanding to the next level, I really recommend this book. It's called GameProgrammingPatterns.com um, and this is not something that's just India specific like you know a lot of people in US um, in SF uh, also use the same book. So so this is considered as a very, very good book uh, specifically for gaming uh, and understanding how programming uh, patterns, design patterns fit in the sense of games especially. Uh, cool. Um, just going through Forge networking and also spatial office and was a little bit confused what should be my approach. So Neeraj, um, let me take a look. What are some multiplayer libraries that you can recommend us for fast-paced shooting games like Battle Royale? Um, so one of the most popular one for multiplayer has been Photon. Um, since it has a very sort of a tight integration with Unity, it gives you a lot of those flexibilities uh, of you know uh, getting something up and running uh, in Unity very fast. So so I definitely recommend that if the focus is not to build a full dedicated server in the back, then uh, you know try and build, try and sort of build a simple game first and understand how Photon works because we tried this internally as well and you know developers were new to Photon itself so we had sort of a trouble because the architecture in terms of typically how you would make uh, games is very different um, with Photon and with a regular sort of a server as well. So, so you know, uh, try and sort of focus a little bit towards first making a simple version uh, and then, you know, once you get a hang of how to use any of these specific libraries, then go on to actually building something uh, slightly more complex. Okay, yeah, uh, so yeah, somebody asked, I guess, where we are. So we are actually in Delhi, uh, but we are a pretty remote friendly company as well. So, you know, uh, for all the passionate game developers and engineers, um, we are sort of location agnostic um, as long as, you know, what you want and what we want sort of aligns. Um, Thanks for sharing. You're welcome, Romson. Thank you for taking it. I'm great. All right, cool. Um, okay, so Romson asked the last question, how to get a publisher for your game. I think it's a very sort of a um, broad question um, and there is no real sort of simple answer there. Um, there's a lot of competition in terms of publishers um, you know, a lot of people trying to, uh, you know, get attention for publishers, a lot of people trying to make clothes. So, uh, so ideally, you know, uh, you, if you really want to get somebody's attention, you should just start with making quality products. Um, so, so that is the most common one as well. Uh, so if you just focus on building something 
unique, something that's actually fun, uh, you know, definitely uh, focus on building a good game that people can actually enjoy playing and then try and approach publishers uh, with it. So a lot of companies in China, a lot of companies in Southeast Asia are focused a lot more on you know, sort of cloning whatever is the latest thing that, you know, Voodoo puts out, whatever is the latest thing that Ketchup puts out, they'll just clone and get it out there within two days. Um, that's, you know, their strategy that works for them, but that works from a business perspective. But if you're really passionate about this industry, um, that's that's more of a gimmick. It, it never really sustains because patterns keep changing, trends keep changing, and you'll always be playing sort of a catch-up game. Um, you know, you'll always be stuck with trying to find what's next, trying to find what's next, etc. So, so it's usually, you know, not very helpful. But, but yeah, I mean, I don't really have a great answer for you, Romson, in finding a good publisher. Um, try to do some networking, uh, be it on LinkedIn, be it on, uh, you know, in person at, you know, events and conferences. And that can obviously help as well. But at the end of the day, you should have a good sort of a product. Uh, unless you have a good game, then you know that you can't really do um, much about it. Cool. Uh, all right. Awesome. So looks like uh, there are no new sort of questions uh, as well. So all right, awesome. So if you guys are interested in working with us, definitely feel free to just shoot out an uh, email to us with your relevant information. Um, hello at the rate outscale.com. Um, the email ID is in the chat, I think. Uh, yeah, there should be somewhere in the chat. Otherwise, I'll just post it again. Cool. So I think we'll end the stream now. Um, thank you again for uh, taking the time out to chat as well and hopefully we'll do this again in a couple of weeks. All right. Bye.